What's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome accessory for the NVIDIA Jetson Nano and this is known as the Ice Tower Cooling Fan. Well this is a whole heat sink and fan combination for this board. And before we get started here I do want to mention that this is kind of an unnecessary addition for your Jetson Nano because the stock heat sink on the Jetson Nano actually does a great job at keeping this Tegra chip pretty cool and if you add a little fan to it you'll never hit that thermal throttle. But it's pretty cool to see awesome accessories for the Jetson Nano because it's such a great little development board and not much has been coming out for this. If you're interested in picking up one of these ice towers for your Nano, they go for around $25 over on Seed Studio. I'll leave a link in the description. But like I mentioned, if you're dealing with any kind of thermal issues with the Nano, just add a little fan and you'll be good to go. Either way, I still want to install this and see how it performs. So in this video, I'm going to be doing some thermal testing with the Jetson Nano. I'm going to do the same test with no fan, a regular old 40 millimeter fan, and the new ice tower. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to receive the ice tower itself. It's constructed of aluminum, and we have this little PWM fan here. It also has RGB built in for all the people who love RGB. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, a few months ago I posted a video on the ice tower for the Raspberry Pi 4, and it actually does a really good job for that. So I suspect this should definitely keep this Nano cooler than the stock heat sink. You're also going to receive a few tools you need to install this with, and some thermal pads. Now with the thermal pads, I recommend not using them and using some type of thermal paste but if you don't have any paste laying around the pads will work so installation of the ice tower is a breeze we just need to pull the nano from its daughter board and if you're not familiar with this the nano itself will just detach from the daughter board it actually uses a sodium slot to get everything connected to your hdmi usb and all your other io all the magic happens in this module we have the tegra x1 and the ram located here so all we need to do now is detach the stock heat sink. There's four Torx screws on the bottom. They're very low profile, so just be careful with them. Take your time. Once we have the stock heat sink off, we're just going to clean up the chip a little bit. And I'm going to apply some thermal paste here. I have some Arctic thermal paste laying around, so I'll just put a little layer on here. And now it's time to attach the ice tower itself. It's just going to go on the same exact way, four torque screws. Make sure you start those screws before you start putting them in. You don't want to strip anything out. When it's all said and done, your module will look something like this. Definitely fits on here really nice. We have those two heat pipes sticking out of the side, and I think it looks pretty good. So we'll just reattach the Nano to the daughter board, and there you have it. All the I.O. on the board is still accessible, we just have a massive heatsink on the Nano. And personally, I think it looks really cool like this. So I've actually already went through and run all my tests with the stock heatsink and the 40mm fan. I've tested a bunch of stuff here and logged everything so we know exactly what the temperatures are. And by the way, this is being powered by a barrel jack and I do have the jumper on the pin so we're running in 10 watt mode instead of 5 watt mode. We'll get the max heat and max performance that we can out of this board. So first up, we have idle temperatures. Keep in mind that all of these temps are in Celsius and these are the maximum that I got out of it. With no fan and the stock heat sink, 30 degrees Celsius. With a fan and the stock heat sink, 30 degrees Celsius. With the ice tower, 28. So we did get a bit of a drop in idle performance just because these heat pipes are pulling a lot more heat from that CPU. Next up, 10 minutes of 720p YouTube video streaming. And the ice tower came ahead again at 36 degrees Celsius. GL Mark, some 2D rendering with no fan. Max temp I saw was 60 degrees Celsius with the fan, 54, and the ice tower, 49. Running some Tensor RT workloads, we had a max temperature of 61 with no fan on the stock heat sink, 52 with the stock heat sink and a fan, and the ice tower came in pretty low with this test at 47 degrees Celsius. Real-time 3D rendering with soft shadows. Now this really works out that GPU and it keeps kind of low on the CPU cores, but we still managed to hit 59 degrees Celsius with the stock heat sink, 51 with the stock heat sink in the fan, and 45 with the ice tower. And finally, my extreme test. I maxed out all four cores using Sysbench for 20 minutes straight with no fan, 63 degrees Celsius, with the stock heat sink and 40 millimeter fan, 55, and the ice tower, 51. So obviously the ice tower is a better performer here, but it's not by much if you're using just a little fan and the stock heatsink. Like I mentioned at the beginning, that's all you really need for the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. 
And for anybody wondering, when this fan is going at full boat, I can't hear it myself. I just hear background noise in my office. I hear some cars going by, but even getting up close to it, I don't hear the fan. There's no whine or turbine sound. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I just wanted to give you a quick look at the all-new ice tower for the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. It definitely works out great, but it's something that you could skip if you really wanted to. Just pick up a little 40 millimeter fan, hook it up to the stock heat sink, and you won't have any thermal issues with the Nano. But I personally think it looks really cool, and I'm glad to see some accessories being released for this awesome development board. If you guys have any questions, or you want to see anything else running on the Nano, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.